Hi everybody, so today we are going to be talking about spinal cord injury. So I want to go over a quick review of the skeletal system really quick and tell you the difference between the spinal column and the spinal cord. So what you're looking at right here is where you see all these bones that are going down the back. That's your spinal column. Your spinal column is made of bone and your spinal column protects your spinal cord. If you notice up here, this is going to be our cervical spine, right? And so this is basically the neck area that we're looking at. This is C1. I'm sorry, this is called the cervical spine. So these go by cervical vertebrae. We number these. This is C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. And C7 is that one that you can feel sticking out at the base of your neck. That's going to be your C7 vertebrae. Now, if you notice, there's a bar right here. And this bar would represent the spinal cord. The spinal cord is inside the spinal column because, once again, the spinal column is protecting the spinal cord. Spinal cord is made of nerves. Spinal column is made of bone. So if we look, you can see how that goes right down through there. In the spinal column, you have your spinal cord. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and talk about what would happen if we injured parts of this. So we're looking at the same thing here. This is the skull. These are my cervical vertebrae that are right here. right? And then down in here, we're going to have thoracic vertebrae. <clears throat> so I'm going to number these just like I did a second ago. And again, this is the neck area. It's cervical vertebrae and they go by numbers. So instead of writing cervical vertebrae, we're just going to call this C1. Now, in actuality, the skull sits on C1. But I just did this so you could see it, right? Then we have C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, and then we're going to have the thoracic vertebrae. Okay, so the thoracic vertebrae, now these start basically right about in here and go down to right about the lower part of the mid-back. In the middle here, that's your spinal cord that I have drawn there, right? So there's the spinal cord. Now, coming off the spinal cord, we're going to have sp spinal nerves. So the spinal cord is part of the central nervous system. Spinal nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system. So now I'm going to just draw my spinal nerves. And there's one, and there's one. And we're going to number these. So these would come off of the spinal cord cord and then they go out to different parts of the body, right? So in the cervical spine, we number the spinal nerves by the vertebrae below, right? So this is C1 vertebrae, then this would be my C1 spinal nerve. This would be my C2 spinal nerve, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. And then because we're in a transition here, we're going to call this C8. Now, once we get to the thoracic spine, we start naming it by the vertebrae above. So this would be the T1 spinal nerve right there. So let's go ahead now and take a look at spinal cord injuries. So the first thing I want to do is talk about why is it that sometimes when people get a spinal cord injury, they pass away and other times they don't. And that has to do with this right here. Coming out from the C3 area, off of the C3, C3 spinal nerve, I am going to have a branch, okay? And then coming off the C4 spinal nerve, we're going to have more of that. And then off the C5, we have more. These branches go on to make something called the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve is going to go down and it innervates or supplies nerve flow to the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is part of what make, helps you breathe, right? It goes up and down to open up the open up the, um, the lungs in the thoracic cage so that way you can breathe, right? So here's what's going to happen. If we get damage above this area at C2 or at C1, if we were to damage the spinal cord up in here, we cannot get nerve flow from the brain down to this area. And if we can't get it down to this area, the phrenic nerve doesn't work, and therefore the diaphragm doesn't work, and you can't breathe, and unfortunately the person passes away. What happens if it happens at C3? If it happens at C3, the person may or may not live. Just depending on where the damage is and how much damage is done, but the, it, we still may be getting some nerve flow out to the phrenic nerve. And by the way, this goes for both sides. I'm just drawing on that side, but it would be on both sides. So now, here's what's going to happen. If we get damage here, the person may live, and if they did, they probably need a respirator. Does everybody? No, but that just as a general rule, okay? If they got it at C4, we would still have this nerve working, right? If the damage is here, this nerve would still be working. So there's a better chance the person would survive 
but they'd also probably need a respirator because C4 is the main branch of the phrenic nerve that innervates the diaphragm. If they got damage here at C5, we'd still have these two branches working and supplying nerve flow to the diaphragm, so there's a better chance that the person would survive and they could probably breathe on their own. Okay, so that's why sometimes if it's up higher, a person's more likely to pass away. So what's gonna happen now? Let's talk about the difference between quadriplegia and paraplegia. A quadriplegic is someone who can't use their arms and legs. A paraplegic is just someone who can't use their legs, but they may be paralyzed basically from the whole chest down. So let's take a look at this real quick. If we have damage basically in the cervical spine, the person's more likely to be a quadriplegic, right? So if we get it from here up. Now the further down I go, the more and more of their arms they can use. But once we get down to this T1 area, basically a person should be able to use their arms, and then you may hear sometimes someone's paralyzed from the chest down. That means the injury is higher up. The further down I go, the more function the person has, right? So they're more likely to be a paraplegic if they get the damage down further, unfortunately, right? I don't mean to sound insensitive. So just to reiterate, so if we get a damage in C1 or C2, most likely a person is going to pass away. If it's at C3, C4, or C5, C6, or C7, or even C8, they're gonna be a, most likely be a quadriplegic, but they still may have more function of their arms the further down we go. And then after T1, they're most likely going to be a paraplegic. So that's it for spinal cord injuries. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button, and we will catch you next time.